Welcome back to our series on the budget template makeover. My name is John and in this series I'm sharing tips and strategies to take this basic budget template and help improve both the look and feel and the usability to make it easier for our users to use. In this episode we're going to take a look at how to create drop down lists and we're going to use these drop down lists to help improve the accuracy and prevent errors that our users might make when categorizing data. So let's get into it. So in that previous video, we looked at how to remove duplicates to create this list of unique categories. And again, it's just a quick recap. These categories are used in this transactions list over here. There's a category column where we're categories, categorizing all of our income and expenses. And these are our actual numbers for our budget. And then those numbers are summed up over here on our budget table in this column right here. So on our transactions list, we want to make it easier for our users to categorize transactions. This is always a painful process with budgeting. And if our users have to type in every single one of these categories for every single line item, that's going to take a long time. And there could also be typos. And we want to make sure all of the categories are spelled exactly the same so we can use that for reporting. So we're going to create a drop down list. And I should also mention that you'll be able to uh, download this file. There'll be a link in the description below where you can download this file and follow along. So the first thing I'm going to do is just select this first cell here in the category column. We're going to go up to the data tab and then choose data validation. And from here, we're going to choose list. So we'll choose list from this drop down. Now our source for this is we'll just click this blue button here and go over to the category list sheet. And for now, we're just going to select this list of items right here, all of our categories. And we'll go ahead and then uh, click this button again. We'll say OK. That'll take us back over to our transaction sheet. And you can see that we now have a drop down list right here with all of our uh, with all of our categories. And so we can just quickly select one of these. If we want to make a change, if this wasn't salary, we could just change it to something else. Or we can quickly change it back. And we don't have to worry about typing in that value and or making typos when we do type in the value. Now this uh, drop down list is kind of the basic drop down list. It's not very dynamic. And what I mean by that is if I go back over to my category list here and I just add an item to the bottom. Let's say we have an item or new category for kids. And uh, if we go back over to our drop down, we can see that kids is not automatically included in the drop down list right here. So there's a few things we could do. One, we could instead of inserting the kids at the very bottom, we could insert a row here. So we could right click insert a row and then add kids above. That's one technique to get around this. So we'll just add kids there. And then if we go back to transactions, we'll now see in our drop down list, we do have kids here. Or another technique is to use an Excel table in a named range to make this more dynamic. And so I want to explain that technique as well. OK, so let's jump over to our category list sheet. And the first thing we're going to do is convert this into an Excel table. So we'll just select any cell inside the table here. We'll go to the Insert tab on the ribbon and click the Table button. Keyboard shortcut is Control T. And then uh, this checkbox, My Table Has Headers, uh, should be checked because we do have a header there, which is the word category. We'll hit OK. And now this has become an Excel table. And I like to rename my tables. So here on the Table Design tab, uh, we'll just quickly rename this. I preface mine with uh, t the letters TBL, and then we'll give it a name. So TBL category will be the name for this table. So now that we have this table, there's another step we need to do. And this is specific to drop down lists. But what we need to do is create a named range for our category column. So the first thing I'm going to do is select all of the cells in the category column. Again, keyboard target there is a control space to select all the cells there. And with all those cells selected, we're going to go to the formulas tab and we're going to click define name. And so this is going to allow us to create a named range. And for the name, I'm going to rename this. I uh, uh, preface all of these with RNG, all of my named ranges. And then we'll call this category. So RNG category, where our named range. As you can see in the refers to box, this is referring to our table name and then our category column. And you'll want to make sure it's doing that as well. You want to make sure that the category column or whatever the name is of the column in your table is referenced here. If not, you'll need to just make sure you select all the cells in the column and that should automatically fill the name in here. But we'll go ahead and hit OK now. 
And so that named range that we just created is always going to reference all of the cells in the column of this table. As we uh, expand this table down, add new items to the bottom, that named range will automatically include all of those items. And so now we can just go back over to our drop-down list and change the source of our drop-down list to that named range. So again, I'll have this cell selected here. I'm going to go to the Data tab on the ribbon. We'll again go to Data Validation. That'll bring up our list uh, properties. And here under Source, instead of Category, we want to delete this and we want to type in that named range. Instead of typing it in, you can also press F3 on the keyboard and that's going to bring up a list of all the named ranges in the workbook. You can see ours here, RNG Category. You can just select that and hit OK. And then that will add that to the source uh, reference right there. We'll go ahead and hit OK. So now our dropdown has uh, the source of the table uh, through that named range. It's kind of an uh, intermediary step through, the, through that named range, but essentially we have the source as the table. And what that means is that if we add items to the table, we can just add items to the bottom. We'll do one for education, if I can spell. So we'll add an item to the bottom there. We'll go over to our transactions list and check out our dropdown. And you can see that education is now at the bottom. So this makes our drop-down list dynamic, meaning if we add items to it, uh, to the bottom of the table, they'll automatically be included in our drop-down list over here, which is really nice. Now, the last thing we need to do is apply this drop-down list to all the cells in the column. And the way you can do that is first just select the cell that has the drop-down list uh, applied to it already. And then you can select all the other cells in the table. You can also use control space here as a keyboard shortcut. And when you do that, you'll see that, again, the first uh, cell selected and then all the rest are selected. This is the active cell. And then we'll go to the data tab on the ribbon and again click data validation. And when we do that we're going to get a prompt here that says the selection contains some cells without data validation settings. Do you want to extend the data validation to these cells? And we're going to say yes. And that'll extend uh, or that'll bring up this window. We'll just go ahead and hit OK. No changes there. And then all of these cells in the column now have the drop down list which is really nice. And since this, uh, this table or this data is in an Excel table, as we go down to the bottom here, and let's say maybe we add another new item to the bottom here, let's add a new date, and that's going to automatically extend my table and add a new row, our drop down list will also automatically be included in any new cells in the table. As you can see here, we have the drop down list, so we can quickly select one of the categories in all new cells in the table. And that's just a feature of Excel tables. Now, if you're not using Excel tables yet, I highly recommend learning more about Excel tables. And I have a separate video that explains Excel tables in more detail, Excel tables for beginners. I'll put a link in the description below where you can check that out. And again, the major advantage of our drop-down list here is we're controlling the user inputs. So for example, if I go to this cell right here and maybe I just decide to type in grocery and I spell it wrong, it's supposed to be groceries and not grocery, and I hit enter here, you can see that Excel is giving me this warning saying the value doesn't match the data validation restrictions defined for this cell. So you can either retry and type in the right formula, I'm sorry, the right value, or you can uh, cancel here and then it's just going to revert back to the previous value. Now you can change those settings in the data validation window, but for now we're just going to leave it like this to prevent errors and only allow the user to either type in or select items from the drop down list. And one other quick tip I wanted to mention was sorting the list in alphabetical order. So we can do that by going over to the category list sheet or wherever the source is for your data validation list. And right here on the table, we're going to hit the filter drop down menu and then choose sort A to Z. That's going to sort our list in alphabetical order. And this sorting also applies to the drop down list. So if we go back over to our drop down list here, we can see that these items are now in alphabetical order. And this will just make it easier for our users to be able to select items from the list. So I hope these tips have helped you. Of course, if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.